I'm going to hand back over to Miss um, Henderson now, um, and she, her and Miss Wickstead will go through all of the information that you need today. So really lovely to see you all. And I'm going to go. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. Thank you. Me as well. Leaving now, so it's me and Miss Wickstead. So myself and Miss Wickstead are assistant head teachers here at Cholton mm -hmm. High, and we are working really closely with Year Seven. Um, I have worked with Year Seven. I I cannot remember the number. It's a, a very, very long time at this point um, for a lot of years. And I also work on transition. So I take transition through to year seven. Um, so hopefully um, I do understand kind of what parents are feeling and what they want, because, you know, I have been on this journey a number of times with, with a lot of our parents and it's it's a daunting one. And, and I don't want to under, underestimate that. It's a big shift from primary school. And we are aware of it and we do take that into consideration. So please do contact us if you're, you're concerned about anything. You know, we, we, we want to be here for you um, as well as your, your children as well. And this is Miss Wickstead. Nice to see everybody here tonight. Good evening. Um, I'm um, Sarah Wickstead. I'm working with uh, Miss Henderson here for the duration of Year 7. And again, um, my background, again, I'm been really experienced with working with year sevens um, many moons ago I was uh, head of year seven and um, probably about three years ago Miss Henderson and I did the job uh, jointly as uh, assistant heads together with year seven so we've both kind of uh, been with young people for this journey and I know that I've sort of met quite a few parents already as part of this and I just wanted to kind of say really quickly that absolutely what Miss Osborne said about the year group um, the last week they have really impressed me in so many ways um, they seem like a really fantastic year group so we're feeling quite excited as, as a bit of a dream team this year for those those young people yeah I mean they've been amazing so you should be very proud of them just the way they've come in and found their feet honestly I don't I don't think I've had a year group that's found it this easy or seem to have found it this easy anyway um, they're amazing they really have they feel like they've been part of the family forever it feels like so i'm going to start with the curriculum now obviously i could spend the next five hours which i'm not going to do going through everything that we teach here at Charlton high um but actually what's useful for parents is for you to be able to find that at your will and um, when you're ready to kind of you know when you're looking for something specific maybe or you want to check out what they're learning in maths or what your child's learning in english you know all our curriculum is on our website so if you look on our website it says student life you click on that you will you can literally just go to year seven um curriculum click on that and it's got every subject that you could possibly want so that's where you need if you if you want to check out what your child's learning in each of those because you want to get ahead of it you want to see what's coming up you've got no plans for half term you think oh what they're doing next half term in their subjects could we do something linked to that you you know that's where you're going to find it if you want to just kind of basically talk to them about it um that's where you're going to find everything that you need to know so i just want to start there and say anything curriculum based is on our website you can get every subject it breaks down the knowledge um that they, they they need to know and the skills that they are working on and this is a big one for parents as well so home study so home study will not you i'm sure your child has got some homework already um but it won't kind of fully get into game until next until next next week the start of next week um and and one by the start of next week every child in year seven will be getting one hour of english maths and science homework a week they'll be expected to read for an hour a week um they'll do one hour of languages a week and then they'll do one hours of humanity subject per fortnight so that's geography and history and um, they'll do up to one hour per fortnight of computing or technology and they'll do a termly creative project in the arts um, and a termly task in music and also a termly task in art so that does feel like a lot of homework but we have really thought about how that kind of how that's made up over the course of the week and um, that that's kind of what you what the child can expect in terms of homework the thing here at Tottenham High is we've got lots of different, um, you know, 
systems that we we do our homework on and i thought it was important to share with parents kind of the the, the, the main ones so in maths homework is set on sparks and um, it's a really intuitive um it it system that you know i think is incredible actually and it's homework is an hour for each year group unless it's completed so what we're saying is if it's completed early in the hour that's fine and, and actually, if you spent an hour on it and you've not finished, that's when you stop. So it's it, it, it doesn't need to be completed in the same way. Um, it, we're, we're looking for the time spent on it. Obviously, different students have different ability when it comes to math. So we're looking for that time being sent on it, spent on it. Um, homework will be set on a Wednesday and due in on a Wednesday. Um, the maths team run a Sparks Club in S71 every Thursday after school. So if your child is struggling with it or you think that that's a good time for them to go to, math, to Sparks Club so they can do the maths homework, that's done then. Um, they've got that one boxed off and um, that's absolutely fine as well. So that's going to be in S71 every Thursday after school. And the maths team will share that with your child as well. Um, English, science and computing will all set homework on Educate. Um, that's that's just that's another another kind of system. But the main thing for parents, I think, to, to kind of tell you is everything that is set will be on MS Teams. So MS Teams is kind of almost like their, vir their, their virtual planner where they've got all the homework listed on it. Um, now, the, the other systems are where they would then go and um, complete the homework, but that just keeps kind of a planner for them on MS Teams. French and Spanish homework will be on uh, Quizlet. So they're the kind of main, the four main things that students will get passwords for over the course of the next week or will have had passwords for Sparks, for maths, Educate for English um, and computing and science, Quizlet for MFL for, for French and Spanish, and everything else will be set on Teams, including maths, English, science and computing. The kind of main overview tasks will be on Teams, just so they've got a kind of a log of everything that they're expected to do in one place. That's why we put it all on Teams. So that's home study. Um, in terms of in terms of other subjects, sorry, I'm just gonna press mute there. Um, yeah. In terms of other subjects, like I said, they'll be on Microsoft Teams and that password's getting shared. And most students have already done this, but basically, if you've got computing, it gets shared in computing in your first computing lesson, if you're year seven, or it will they'll be taken in in form time into a, a computer room and they'll be logging on in a computer room with their form tutor with a computer with one of our computer teachers and that will that they'll be supported in that process as well in school so that's kind of um the overview of home study and i think it's important to say as well that we know that um there are your kids who come with um, specific educational needs who may struggle sometimes to um access the homework or need additional support for that um, and that is something that you can talk through with our access and achievement team. Um, we also have a specific homework uh, club after school where we can support young people uh, that staff by teaching assistants as well. Um, because we know through some young people it can seem, you know, quite a um, quite a sort of hurdle to get over uh, the sort of concept of homework and getting to grips with these systems. So there is support in place for that as well. Um, so I just want to talk through a little bit um, now some of our pastoral curriculum, um, because this is something that is really kind of close to our hearts at Chalton High, this idea that um, in your form, you, you're kind of part of that um, five year journey that you spend together with your form, with your form tutor. And there are some brilliant um, things that young people can do over this year in year seven to earn some badges. Um, so there's a total of six badges that a young person can earn over the school year. Um, and there are times if they don't get one for one part term, you can go back and, and accrue that in other ways over the year. Um, they always wear these with great pride. It's always really nice to see them with all these six uh, in July on their blazers. Um, so each term, there's a different focus. Um, so, for example, in the autumn term, the focus for year seven makes sense is I embrace life and I prepare to succeed. 
Um, and within that, they have little challenges that they complete with their form tutor and in their form class. Um, this can be um, around supporting each other. It may be around an external challenge. Uh, so for example, uh, the year sevens, I'll talk about this a little bit later, will be supporting a charity this year. So there's a charity drive where they all become involved in uh, a particular piece of charity work. Um, and the badges um, go through a kind of logical order, really, that you would go through in your sort of pastoral journey at Chalton High. Um, so in autumn two is where we start to look at the charity drive. So that's around I support my community and make a difference to it, for example, an example. Um, and it's all linked together. The pastoral curriculum is really, really closely linked to all our um, key qualities of success. So empathy, practice, uh, reflection, it all ties together. Um, and at the moment, for the young people, they don't kind of necessarily see how that does. But as they as they go through, um, they become really familiar with those words and those terms. Um, but it is fantastic. And I'm particularly, I have to say, I'm particularly fond of a badge. So it's really nice um, when they have their badges and they can really show pride in what they've achieved in their pastoral curriculum. Um, so sort of running along that and, and kind of, um, I guess, sort of in, in sort of the pastoral world, but this doesn't just sit in the pastoral world, this is sort of universal uh, thing for us at Chalton High, is we do like to think about um, the sort of mental um, and emotional fitness of our young people. It's a big transition time for year seven. Um, and it is every year group, as they move up, they, they have times of transition. They may have times where they are struggling with something, um, it might um, come at a time where there's a change and, and where they might need some intervention or support. So we have a mental fitness provision. Um, we have a universal offer, um, which we teach um, certain aspects of emotional fitness for young people. That comes through the respect curriculum, uh, through the pastoral curriculum in form time. We also have focus weeks where we may sort of pick a particular topic for young people and focusing on that particularly maybe around progress tests um, and where we're sort of talking with that kind of language how we support our young people through those kind of processes also comes through assembly and there is a focus on that in curriculum areas as well um, but we know that young people maybe need more they might be need more support throughout their life at high school or at just parts of their time at high school uh, it can be longer term or shorter term so we have a wave of interventions um, wave one interventions might include some timeouts um, so young people some young people have timeout cards used really really well uh, and really sensibly quiet spaces where they just might need a time to sort of decompress have a little bit of of time to, to refocus um, some one-to-one -one work where they maybe touch base with a particular key worker or a mentor. We direct some people to websites. Um, so we have some online um, websites that young people use really effectively to support them. Um, we also then have a second and third wave. So wave two might be that a young person might access a boost group session. Um, where that mentor may be working with a group of young people on supporting their um resilience in school or maybe coping with certain situations in school depending on what that focus is um growth mindset sessions again led by learning mentors um then we have wave three which we have a think room in school so we refer into that um that's where a, a trained trained staff work with young people on a, a six to eight week program on specific um issues that that you might young person might present and it's very much led by the young person um, we have counselling in school uh, music therapy and drama therapy again these are things that we refer into the referrals for that come through the pastoral team so it might be through Miss Osborne uh, it might be through myself and Miss Henderson uh, it might be through the head of school Miss Wilson um, in consultation with you and that's really important that parents have a, a really sort of key role in that we do also have way for um, provision. So we have uh, we work really closely with CAMS, the Child's Mental, uh, Mental Adolescent Health Services, with speech and language therapists. Um, 
we have educational psychologists from different um, different branches that come to work in school. Uh, we have a school nurse service. So we have quite a lot of agencies that we work with. Um, and if this is something that maybe um, you want to continue for you for a young person, might be started in primary school or something, um, you sort of feel that it might be something that's beneficial, please get in touch with us. Um, it's everything is on the website though. There is a, a whole section on the website for this. Um, and Ms. Shabaris leads on this in school. So that is another good contact in school uh, to talk to. And I will say our mental fitness provision changes as well during the year. Um, so as we hear of new things or as we um, kind of feel that there might be more of a need for a key group of young people in school, we will change it. So there is a sort of level of flexibility to that. And we will put those offers on the website as well. But again, please get in touch if you need that. OK, so I'm going to move over to assessment processes just so we um, can kind of help well help you understand kind of what's going to happen in the next half term in terms of assessment. So we will test all students using CAT tests and PASS tests in the autumn term. And that is purely just for us to gain a better understanding of their potential uh, and, and to support with some target setting that we do from a school's perspective. Students are not required to revise at all for these. We don't want any pressure put on them to perform. It's just so we, we just want them to do the best in that situation. Um, other than that, that's all we, we expect nothing else. There'll be no kind of there'll, there'll be no pressure in, in those circumstances. We've already done reading tests and we've already we've already kind of started our processes if, if we've needed to in of, of intervention there. Um, now that is annually for most of our students, but it will be termly for some identified students. Um, and, and you will be informed of, 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 of how they how they do there in terms of um, if, if we need to put in, in intervention there. And they'll do electronic progress tests in English, maths and science. Again, these are just for our just 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 for our kind of measures and, and students do not need to worry one little bit about any of those things. Um, it, it purely just helps us kind of understand where we need to go next in order to support our students. That's all that's for. However, we do have and this kind of is, is, is a bit more kind of necessary. They'll need to do more revision at this point. We do have two sets of progress tests in all subjects over the course of the academic year and they take place in spring one and summer two. Um, now they're on the school calendar. So if you go on our website, there's a school calendar. So if you went to spring, it can tell you exactly what weeks I think I've actually put it. In, in this meeting as well. Um, and it just focuses on the le learning that they've completed in the previous you know, academic terms. Um, it'll be done over a two week period. Um, we'll share with them revision timetables. They'll be discussed in form for them to do kind of their own. Um, English, maths and science dates will be fixed. So we'll tell you exactly, we'll tell students exactly when they are and parents. And all other subjects will be specified in terms of what week on the two weeks timetable. This is new this year, actually. Uh, what week on the two week timetable that that progress test will take place. Um, I'm going to come back to that because it makes more sense when 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 I come back to it. Um, parents will see, receive all the information via email about what will be covered in the test, as will the student. Um, and teachers will mark the test and parents will receive the report in terms of progress made um, in at the end of the first spring one half term. Um, after progress tests, teachers respond to the gaps and highlight that are highlighted from the test as part of the curriculum. So that's part of our processes is responding to those gaps. So this is where it makes a little bit more sense. So week one uh, of, of spring progress test will be the 15th of July next in 2024. Um, and like I said, we specified what subject they are going to be in. So English, maths, English and science will definitely be in that week, but we'll give you an exact date for that. Um, French and Spanish will be in their French and Spanish that week. And history, art and drama and PE will be that week. So you can literally look at their timetable because they only have those subjects once in that week. And that will be when the progress test is. The following week is a second week of progress test, which is the week after. And that's when they'll have their maths progress test, their geography progress test, their EPR progress test, music, dance and tech or computing. Um, 
I'm just going to go back back a little bit to French and Spanish because this th this is where it's a little bit different. We want our students to prepare for the first week. However, the way that it's done because it's speaking, they might end up doing it in the second week. But that that's the only way we can do it. As long as they're prepared for the first week, that should be fine. Um, but that's how we're running progress tests this time. Our lights have just gone out. Sorry, we, we're in we're in the dark. Um, that's how progress tests will run, and we we can publish these. We're going to publish these on our website you know in the next couple of weeks so you can have access to this in the next couple of weeks and that's the same again for the summer so we already know exactly when progress tests will take place for the spring progress test and the summer progress test and they're you know they're both um that's the spring one and there's the summer one so you know if you've got any questions about that pl please let us know but but in terms of specifying when they are we've never done that before we've normally asked students to collect kind of when they are but we're, we're being more specific with departments about when they're going to be and that's when progress tests will take place um during this academic year so that's kind of progress test but i did want to talk a little bit about you know what we need to focus on in terms of the key indicators for future success. Now, obviously, we want our students to be as um, successful as possible. And we know, and, and history has taught us, and all of our experiences has taught us that effort and habits are the two key indicators of future success. Um, we know that the more effort students put in throughout their five year journey, the better habits they, you know, the more consistent habits they create, that leads to to the, the best kind of success for those students academically. Um, not every student is as gifted as the other, but I can tell you that hard work is the most powerful of, of all of, 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 of all the students we've ever seen that are successful. Hard work's been at the bottom of it. Um, and it's made a huge difference. We've always focused on this um, and it's made a huge difference. It is the second year running that Charlton High School has got the best results in Manchester. And, and that's not by accident, that's by design. So, it, you know, we really do encourage our parents to talk to their students, to their, to their children even, about their effort, um, because that is just such a big game changer for our students. And looking at the students that, you know, that we, we've met over the last week and a half, they're a delight. So I really aren't worried about that. But yeah, that's what we want you to focus on as parents. If you can support us with talking about effort and making clear that habits kind of those those habits that we're trying to teach them. And I'm going to share some of them with you tonight um, are, are super important and, and will make the biggest different difference for them because ultimately our goal is that all our students are successful creative and happy and we know that you know that kind of accomplishment of, of being able to put in your effort and, and get those habits right just makes such a big difference so we just wanted to share that with parents that our focus is effort and habits um, and we start with habits all you know within the assessment process because we we teach them how to revise from young, from a, from year seven, and we start small. We might we just focus on mind maps, for example, in year seven, and we build it up over the course of the years just to get them into those good routines. Because actually, progress tests aren't just about what they get at the end of it. It's about that routine of okay, I've got this coming up. How can I prepare for that? And it's about it's about the it not being so pressured at, at the start of school because that does become much more pressured as you can imagine as they hit towards GCSEs it becomes you know we don't want that to be a shock to them and that's why we kind of has, we support that habit as we move through the school so that's in terms of assessment we will help support their revision habits as well and and like I said in, in terms of parent parental support it's just you know helping them have um, a place to study at home you know making sure that they've got somewhere to study making sure they've got simple resources that might be useful, things like highlighters, coloured pens, paper, and just encouraging them to use the habits and the small routines in the period leading up to progress tests. That's it really, if you can support us on that, um, and we'll be doing it from our end as well. Um, it, it make, it's just so powerful and, and that's what we want to focus on. So that's kind of our um, assessment routine and i know i've talked a lot about home home study today but reading is a really important habit when it comes to success the ability to read you know fluently is is is, is really really important and 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 it is one of those things that requires 
a routine requires it to be consistent. And that's why as part of our homework, uh, home study plan, we expect our students to read for 20 minutes a day. And by 20 minutes a day, I mean 20 minutes a day during the week. We'd love them to read for 20 minutes every day, seven days a week. But as a minimum, we want them to read for an hour a week. Now, we, when we talk to students about this, we talk about that not needing to be 20 minutes in one block. Sometimes that can be too overwhelming for some of our students. Five minutes in a block is absolutely fine. It might be the five minutes before their dinner's ready. You know, it might be five minutes before their breakfast is ready. It might be five minutes before their favourite favorite sh um, TV show starts. W whatever works for your family or within your family routine, it, it is absolutely fine um, but I also think them establishing a routine is really important if that is I go to bed 20 minutes early because I do my 20 minutes of reading before I go to sleep I mean that's great for them in terms of getting to sleep but it just makes it consistent every single day and that's I highly recommend that if they can get that at this age in year seven it, it's easy to maintain as they get older because as they get older, they become more teenage-like, as I'm sure you're aware, and that can get a little bit more tricky. So I think getting a good established habit now is really, really useful when it comes to reading. So that's kind of, uh, you know, we've talked about habits, and, and I think it's really important to share with parents the things that we talk to students about. And our learning environment at Charlton High School is something that we really consider um, a lot. And, and, and we have a learning environment that is calm and, and calm and focused, has habits and routines and embraces struggle and repetition. And this all, you know, we're very, we're a highly led research school. We really do our research and make sure we know what we're talking about. And we know that learning happens best when the environment is correct. And things like being calm and focused means that you're, your attention's on the right thing. You know, having habits and routines, it, you know, that takes away some of the working memory that they have to use to do to, to learn more. And embracing struggle and repetition, we know it's in the struggle where our students are learning. It's in the re repetition where it's, it's, it's going into their long-term memory. So we really do kind of focus on this learning environment as something that allows them to be empowered and challenge themselves and be successful. So they, th that's something that we're talking to our students about. I'm not going to read through each of those, but this, this is kind of supported by what we call the CHS Scholar. And these are learning habits that we introduced last year. And we've always had routines at Charlton High, but we kind of... Um, we, we, we created a really consistent set of, of routines. And these learning habits have been born out of research and out of understanding what our most successful learners have kind of, uh, you know, as, as a natural part of who they, they become as part of going through the school, what it is that they, you know, what's the, what's, what's the, the cause of, of what makes them successful? So, um, that is obviously we 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 we're working on and I'm, I'm actually not going to go through all of these we've got seven at the minute i know that year seven have only heard about one of them properly and that is the organized one we started with organized because it's about organization in their exercise book making sure the learning makes sense to them where it is how they've positioned it where they're sticking sheets making sure they can revisit learning all of that being really organised is really important. So we, we started there and I know that for year seven, that's all they've really been introduced to in terms of scholar habits. I know on Friday, we're going to introduce the attention habit, which is pay attention like a star. And that will all make sense to them too after Friday, but we're going to do this slowly. So those two are quite, we've, we've introduced, you know, at some speed, but we're going to slow it down. So these habits will be introduced to them slowly over the course of the year. Um, but but it, it'd be interesting to talk to them about these, you know, what, you know, what are the scholar habits? They probably can only talk to you about organization at this point, but what does that mean to them? And how are they, how are they accomplishing that in terms of stepping up their organization? What are they doing in order to be successful in that habit? It can just be a really powerful way of, of, of kind of talking to, to your child about what they're doing in school. Um, I'm going to pass over to Miss Wickstead to talk about enrichment. And I do apologise, this is a lot of information, which is why we, we did it virtually this time, um, just so we can give you the information and then hopefully you can have a think. If there's anything we've missed, you can let us know. 
um, and absolutely sort of go back on this. I know there's a lot of information. The, the idea of it being recorded is you can go back and have a look as well um, at, at those key parts. So really, yeah, we've talked a little bit about learning habits in the classroom, but actually equally as important um, and equally as powerful for young people is enrichment outside the classroom. So we have a real commitment um, to enrichment activities um, that go sort of beyond the usual curriculum. And young people, we know we really want to encourage them, particularly in year seven, to embrace these uh, extracurricular clubs, um, to encourage them to, to pick one, to go to one, to try things out. I mean, it's been phenomenal seeing how many young people came to the auditions uh, for the drama. And I've been inundated with people asking me about um, the different football clubs and netball clubs, which is fantastic. But really, you know, we'd encourage people um, to come to this. Look at the list because there's a real diverse uh, range of clubs and um, enrichment activities that young people can uh, attend, you know, from anything to you know, chess club and to Nintendo club. Um, so try them out. And it's a really nice way of meeting other young people. Um, so it might be other young people outside your classroom. Um, it might be other young people from other year groups. And what's nice is that for our young people over the next five years, sometimes they stick with those clubs and remain members of those clubs for those five years. And then as they go into college, we'll kind of extend, if there's a similar club at college, go into that. Or, so it, it kind of feels like that's something to really encourage young people to go to. We know they might be a little bit reticent. They might be a bit hesitant. Because it's kind of out of the, you know, it's out of the, the school day and there's kind of making the arrangements and things like this. But, you know, if there is a problem with that, you know, get in touch with Head of Year, get in touch with ourselves and we can sort of help facilitate as much as we can uh, for that. So those information will be out by Friday so everyone can see that and they are all bookable as well. So you can keep track of that as a parent as, as to what's on them. Um, so part of enrichment as well, we have something called extended learning experiences, which get shortened down to LE days. Um, and there's various uh, theories with year sevens what any actually means, but it's extended learning experience. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea is that outside of um, the curriculum, there are additional days, uh, particularly in the summer, um, where young people can extend their experiences. It includes a sports day um, for year seven, eight and nine, but also there are kind of days within there where um, students might experience working with different professionals, uh, might go on educational visits, uh, might learn new skills. There's a real um, there's a real plethora of activities on offer on Ellie Days as well. So you'll hear a little bit more about this as you go through the year. Um, and they're always were really well received by the young people. They absolutely love these experiences. Um, and very often you'll ask them, you know, what was the best part of, of being in year seven? And I'll say the early days, which, <laughs> you know, is, is, is really sort of testament to that. Um, also, in terms of enrichment um, across the curriculum, we know that young people, um, they uh, are sometimes um, exposed to things outside of school that we might think that they need um, a little bit of uh, education on that is actually better done outside of the classroom environment. So very often we have um, social action plays that so we use our theatre um, and we have visiting theatre companies to reflect kind of key social issues that might crop up uh, for young people uh, from year seven to, to year 10. So we explore through theatre, through coming, coming together as a community and obviously we do some preparation before and after for that as well uh, within the classroom around some of those key issues of vulnerability uh, for our young people. Um, so we also um, have enrichment that comes through our pastoral curriculum as well. Um, so we have a charity drive uh, for each year group. Uh, for year seven this year, it will be refugees as a charity. And as you can see, there's different uh, charities for different year groups, maybe more uh, tailored to be sort of age appropriate for, for teens. Um, and there will be a drive for that. You'll get lots of information. But what we also, because we know that, you know, we've got um, a lot of parents who are active uh, in the community outside of school. If there's anything that you would like to offer to school, anything you feel you could get involved in, if you've got any ideas um, to extend our kind of ideas around charities, 
please get in touch. Um, there's an email contact for Miss Quinn uh, on the uh, school website. But again, myself and Miss Henderson are always happy to kind of um, hear that and, and forward that through uh, other members of the, the senior leadership team. Um, so this is quite a big one, really. Um, I'm not going to talk through all the slides, but I'll sort of highlight a few things here. Um, for our young people, particularly year seven, um, this is kind of around them. Um, they get a little bit more freedom, um, sort of with uh, sometimes freedom in terms of their independent travel to school or the change friendships. But we really wanted to highlight digital safety as well for, for year seven. Um, Obviously, we have rules around use of phones at school, um, but we know that young people do use digital devices outside school. And we've got some key messages, really. Um, and as parents, I know it's really difficult sometimes to keep up with what young people are accessing. There's new websites all the time, new chat facilities and things like this. But we've got some key basic ideas um, that we know work and we've worked with the sevens in the past that that work and just kind of if you keep on top of those that really helps um so things like passwords make sure that young people um keep their passwords and usernames to themselves um it sounds like a really basic thing but i know in year seven people make friends and somehow they think a good idea for friendship is sharing a password even if it's like that or a team's login or something like this i would say don't 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 do that it's about kind of keeping your information safe um, also, we kind of know that the young people are exposed a lot to online sources of information. So through the curriculum and also through assemblies, we do get them to think about questioning the source. Is it based on facts and opinion? Is it something that's too good to be true? We encourage them to check in with adults as well for that kind of information that they access. Um, and we always say recommend CEOP as well um, to report things um, that they're not, not comfortable with but always have that conversation at school as well with us because we can um, get ahead of things as well um, so social media we know that not everyone has a social media account um, and parents have you know it's, it's different parental choices when you introduce that to your young person and um, at home but we do know that there are um, some platforms that young people talk about things like TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat I'm going to probably at this point now that this, this has been broadcast, there'll be a new platform that they'll be using that they'll be telling me about tomorrow that isn't included on here. It moves at a really, really fast um, pace, but please try and sort of limit their interactions with those and also monitor their privacy settings as well. Um, also for our young people, particularly as they're traveling independently to school and things, disabling their location services is really important. Um, and just making sure that um, if they have got, um, yeah, they've turned on their phone to find my friends app, but that the individual apps have those locations turned off, just, just for the sort of the safety of young people. Um, we also talk, I've talked a little bit about different platforms. I think every year that I've done something like the digital safety, um, a safety message, there's been something new out there. Um, and sometimes we'll get a message after with something, you know, from a parent where we've, we've kind of not heard of this particular platform. But please be aware that um, some of the newer social media um, platforms do push content to young people. Um, so it's just worth monitoring that. Um, and there are sort of screen time uh, limitations that some of these sort of TikTok put in place. But it's really worth sort of keeping a, a, an eye on that because sometimes young people are pushed things through these that that we have no control over. Um, but you know we have had young people who've, who've seen who've been concerned about something they've seen or something that's been pushed to them. So just please be aware of that really, and um, we will support you in any way we can with that. Um, there's also, um, you know, as, as somebody who's who's been a parent of a teen um, and tried to keep pace with digital safety, it's very difficult. Um, there's some really good content on the National Online Safety website, lots of resources um, that tell you a little bit more about those sort of trendy websites. Um, and, you know, there is some really good information out there. So, you know, have a look at that. Um, and we would say, and, and Miss Henderson's touched on it, you know, in terms of the reading in a bedtime routine, um, 
try to sort of limit the screen time before before bedtime you know that is something that is a really good habit um to get into and get you know students to to switch off notifications because there's maybe somebody who's got uh, more access to a phone and they're getting a notification from their friend at, at midnight that wakes them up it's 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 something that kind of disturbs their sleep and concentration so absolutely just you know be careful with that um because i and i don't want to sound like i'm sort of um terribly down on social i think social media i think that, that you know we're in this digital age um and young people can get a lot of value out of it but it's just being careful as well at least sort of at the point that they're at high school, I think, that about how they're using that. So the other thing that I want to, to cover a little bit as well with you now is obviously we've given you a lot of information today <laughs> and I promise that, you know, we will have, hopefully it'll be less, uh, it'll be uh, less of a, a sort of a, a sort of 37 slide lecture from us for the next uh, times, but obviously it's year seven, so there's a lot to get out there. There's an in-person parent tutor evening on the 5th of October, uh, where you'll get to meet uh, the team here and the tutor team, just to have a, a check-in to see how young, young people are settling in there. Also before then, there is a SE, um, an SEN um, drop-in, which is on the 20th of September. And I know some parents have had that today because they've been talking to me about it, the notification for that. That again is in person and will be in our school's uh, green room. And it'll be a chance to meet the SEN team and chat through anything, see how the young people have settled in um, and to go through anything there as well. So that you, you don't have to try and do two things at once at that, at that parent's evening. In, in terms of the tutor evening as well, um, the library will be open mm -hmm. during that evening because it is only a five minute slot with their tutor because it's just about putting a face to a name and just seeing how they've settled in. But you're welcome to bring your child with you to that. Um, the library will be open, you can go up there together and there'll be someone there that's a little bit more, you, that could support with any teams questions that you might have as well. And uh, we've got a gorgeous library with loads of books. So if parents wanted to come and be with their, oh, you know, the child where they pick up a book, you want to get really, tea? You know, I think that's going to be really beneficial. You want ice cream? Um, I'm sorry, I'm just muting. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, that, that's the tutor evening. So it, it doesn't, don't let the five minutes put you off. There will be other things that we can do. And I'm going to get some tea and coffee laid out as well. So you can come and if you if you want to talk to other parents, hopefully there'll be a space in the dining room for that also. Yeah, that's a really nice opportunity to sort of network with the people and make connections with parents and, and it kind of arrange meetups with your people, things like this. Then in we have another in-person in meeting, which is in May, which is the Year 7 Parents Evening, where you get to meet the subject teachers um, and again, sort of look at the progress of the, the young people over the year. Um, we also have um, a series of these uh, virtual information evenings as well to share information throughout the year. You'll get effort reports in autumn two and spring two. Again, it's, it's we're looking at effort because that is our key drive is, is putting that effort in. We know that young people are all different at different points academically, but it's the effort that we're looking at at this point for those. The academic reports come in in spring one and summer two. That's after the progress test. Um, and you'll get half turning letters home with all the key information that you, you need. There is a two weekly chalk and connection newsletter as well. Uh, we also have a termly um, uh, send um, newsletter that comes out. And we also have at the bottom here, there's a little bit of information about there are sort of ad hoc evenings that occur. So uh, for example, we have had in the past how we teach English and maths um, to show parents how that works at high school. Um, and we'll sort of share those as we come through the year. So there will be ad hoc things that we may think, feel that there's a need for. We might have some information uh, to share with you and we will we will put those into the, the mix as well. Yeah, and all of this is communicated in advance of the event. So I know, for example, 
Um, I have just written all the communication for the parent tutor evening and you know you'll get your first letter on Monday um, and then we, we, we there'll be reminders throughout the course of what to book it and all of those kind of things so all of this is communicated via email um, through the Arbor app but it should come direct to your email as well just for those parents that maybe haven't already logged on to there it is really useful to do so because it like I said they're all communicated through them and the weekly newsletter the two weekly newsletter is, is also sent through there as well so obviously there's a lot we're communicating a lot today <laughs> uh, tonight but we've got um just to sort of really be transparent about um things because obviously you know the move to high school there's a lot more teachers um you know we're quite a big building there's kind of contrast to that sort of primary phase so we just wanted to sort of share what our communication policy is and hopefully what um you can expect from us and um how things work you know if there is something that is really really urgent um because i know that's something people sort of parents talk about and get are quite concerned about um so if you do email in if you do email in um to a particular member of staff it's three working days um Sort of expect to reply within that's just because there's a lot of teachers that we will have full teaching commitments and so we say three working days and if you can communicate within working hours that that is really um good in terms of people sort of balancing that work-life balance um if you have a community query about a subject um you can direct it to the curriculum leader or the teacher themselves um if it's based around a subject. If you've got a sort of general query, as Miss Osborne said before, please put that through to, to the head of year. You know, so if, if there is a lost P kit, uh, we get a lot of lost P kits, that's why mm -hmm. <laughs> Jane said that before, please, you know, send that through. Or if it's if it's a query about friendship groups or if it's around our mental fitness curriculum, send that into the head of year and, and they will get back to you. Um, if you're communicating by telephone, there's a, the main sort of switchboard is the best uh, place um, to go to, because if you want to speak to a teacher directly during the day, they could be teaching. So myself and Miss Henderson have quite a, a, a big timetable and I teach, I certainly teach uh, a few uh, young people from year seven, so you will, you will know that. Um, but if you um, want to get through, they'll, they'll take a message and they will get back to you within in those three days. But we do appreciate that there are times when there is something urgent um, that you might need to to get in communication with us. Um, let the receptionist know it's urgent um, and they will try. They will phone the head of year um, and let them know or myself or Miss Henderson or a member of SLT on duty. So if we really yeah, if you really need to get in touch with, with us about something, we're absolutely, you know, it isn't going to be three days to get back to that, that um, to a really, really urgent request. Um, meetings, um, if we can have pre-arranged meetings, that is really, really helpful as well. Um, if you get in touch with us, we'll try and put one to, together for you within sort of five working days. Um, and again, you know, that um, we can sort of arrange that and be flexible about, about where, when we arrange that um, and we can do virtual meetings as well um, I know some parents I've, I've uh, met with over teams they find that more convenient that's absolutely fine so in person or over teams um, we have got a communication policy on the website um, it's it's on there have a look at it um, but we wanted to share it with you just because um, we don't want anyone to sort of feel frustrated if they feel that somebody's not got back to them straight away it just takes that little bit of time on certain things and in terms of contacting us you know obviously we've all got our own email addresses if you start with the admin email so admin at charlton high dot manchester dot sch dot uk that's the that's the starting place and if you're really clear in the subject line who it's for the attention of so for example if it's an english query for the attention of the curriculum leader of english or, or for just the attention of english if it's for miss osborne for the attention of the head of year seven you know just be really clear for who it's uh, who it's for the attention of um, and it will get to us but one thing that I, you know we have got this policy and we definitely aim to stick by it but sometimes sometimes our staff are not here and they don't actually get the email and it doesn't come via someone else 
if you feel like you've not been re responded to, please don't wait. Don't don't wait to be to, to kind of see how long it will take. Can you just email either myself or Miss Osborne or Miss Wickstead because we will we will make that a, a priority. And and because I don't what I don't want to do is for things to get lost. Mm -hmm. Um and and that you know we, we, that can happen. It doesn't happen often, but it can happen. And I don't like that to happen. So if you could just kind of give us a heads up if, if something isn't going as it should um, that's really useful for us um, and we'd really appreciate it okay so this is the big question that I've been asked quite a few times from a number of parents and it's about the streaming arrangements for the year group for year seven and by that I mean how are we setting them um, and so I've been out to English and maths and science and they are the only subjects that will set this academic year um, and ask them what that will look like in their subjects and I, I I'm here to share it with you all so hopefully it makes sense if you've got any questions um just just send an email and, and I'll get back to you no problem so in terms of English we'll start with English year seven will be taught in forms until the end of this half term and then they'll be placed into three equal ability bands so by that Band one will have four equivalent ability classes. So, so effectively sets one to four will be of absolute equal ability. They are all effectively set one. Band two will again have four equal equivalent ability classes. So sets five, six, seven and eight will all be of exactly the same ability. So there'll be the same ability in set eight than they are in set five. Um, and then band three will have three equivalent ability set classes and that will be 9, 10 and 11. Um, so that's English in terms of year seven. In terms of streaming them, we are going to be using key stage two assessments to make them judgments and obviously after the half term teacher judgment as well. So the things that they do in class in the next half term will also be used to inform some of those some of those decisions because we're aware that key stage two is not always accurate but equally we're, we don't want you know we want to make sure that we do the right things for every student so that's kind of what's informing those decisions moving into the end of half term so that's english math and Charlton high school and and and, and, and this is for a reason we have um we we make sure really clearly that we are teaching um, e effectively for each subject. And, and so that's why we have different streaming arrangements for different subjects, because we want to make sure it makes sense in every subject. Now, as you know, currently, you, math, Year 7 are taught in two separate bands, uh, two halves. So in maths, they're currently in form tutor groups, but they are going to be streamed within the next couple of weeks using key stage two results. So maths are going to stream the fastest out of the three core subjects. They're going in the next couple of weeks. I'm sure you understand why that is. Um, maths is, is a subject where it, it does need to be less mixed ability and, and much more streamed than, than, than math English does, for example. So that's going to happen in the next couple of weeks. And they are going to be using key stage, key, key stage two results to do that. Again, in maths, if you're in band one, you'll be within two equivalent ability classes on one side of the year and three equivalent ability classes on the other side of the year. Band two, it'll be two. So I'll give it you in numbers. Band one, you'll be in sets one and two on one side of the year. But if you're on the other, you'll be in sets one, two and three. Band two, if you're on one side of the year, will be three and four. You can get a, a gauge, though of this and on the other side of the year it'll be four and five and then band three um on one side of the year will be six uh, sorry five and six and band three on one side of the year will be six so there's six classes basically in both sides if you've got any questions about where your child has fallen in that ask them first because they're probably aware but also please email maths if, if that doesn't make sense like it's, it's because they're taught in two separate about a group so it gets a little bit um it gets a little bit less clear than it is in year eight and nine when they're taught all together at the same time science so science again we we break science into five bands and each of them apart from band five will have two equivalent ability classes so one and two are kind of top sets two and three set two four and five set three um six and seven set four 
eight, nine, ten, set five. That's how it's going to work in science. So you're kind of looking at twos for top, two classes for second, two classes for third. That's how we're doing it. So they're equivalent classes. If you've got one on your timetable, um, set one, it's the same as having two on your timetable. You're in it, you're in exactly the same ability class as, as, as the people that have got one. Um, so that's, I mean, that's a lot to take in in terms of our streaming, but hopefully it gives you an idea that we don't just stream top to bottom in terms of ability. We we mix within those equivalent classes. So we'll have, you know, the, the brightest mixed within the, the in the top two sets, the brightest will be mixed within the two classes. And, and as we go down, that's the same. So it, that gives us a little bit more information about what we mean by streaming and how that's going to happen. So the key things to know is, um, Science are, going to, are not going to stream until after spring one's progress test. They're going to use key stage two data and the progress test to help them to help them stream. English are going to do it at the end of this half term using key stage two data and teacher judgment. And maths are going to do it in the next couple of weeks using key stage two data. Hopefully that and, and they're the only subjects. Every every other subject will be taught in forms currently. In terms of another thing that we get asked a lot about is Arbor. Arbor is our um, management system. You can make payments on this. Many of you already have. I know you've been buying ties in it throughout summer, so I know that that's definitely happened. Um, your child's full timetable can be accessed through the desktop or a laptop. On your phone, sometimes it's not as clear the full timetable, but on, on, a, on a desktop or a laptop, you can see it all. You can still get the timetable though on a phone. It's just not the full one, you know, visible at, at the same time. And lockers are available. I've had a lot of questions from students about lockers. We are we are going through them and we are handing out keys. Some students have got them already and it just takes time because we've got, you know, obviously we've had year 11s leave. We've got to make sure the lockers empty. Then that's how we kind of rotate the lockers through the years. So they're coming if they've not got them already um, it won't be it won't be it won't be much longer in terms of getting the keys for those and they've asked a lot about timings to, to their lockers as well so i'll share it with parents but i'm going to share it with them on friday in, in in assembly but in terms of accessing their lockers the main time to access their lockers is on their way to period one um after they've had form time as they come down for break and as they come down for lunch and then after school, whenever they can access it at any point, they're the main points of accessing their lockers. The reason for that is they meet us in a lineup outside for form. So they go to form with their whole um, form group. And then after that, between form and period one, they've got time. If all they're doing is maybe swapping some books or putting something in it, you know, that's not going to make them late for lessons. So in terms of that, that's when they access their lock their lockers. But I will clarify that with students on Friday as well. Over to Sarah. Sarah. Right. So um, just we had again some questions about what's on offer in our dining room in terms of food. Um, so a meal deal is £2.80 and you can um, get a combination of things here. So any meal, any mini home bake and one side dish for mini home bake with those meal deals. Um, there is a little price list on the side. If I just say that I spotted a typo tonight, we the uh, hot filled baguette does not cost two hundred pounds. <laughs> it's actually two pounds. That would be one uh, heck of a filling in there. I think if we were charging two hundred pounds for that, um, it is two pounds. Um, but what's been really good this year is um, usually you seven are kind of fixed on what they want to eat, but mm. but the your guys have actually been trying lots of different uh, counters and lots of different options, which is really good. So there's lots of options there for, for everybody. And um, you can see again there as well in the mornings. Uh, so from eight o'clock, there are complimentary breakfasts available. So uh, I can highly recommend the porridge um, from the so they can pick up a, a, a a complimentary breakfast in the morning just to set them up for the day um, and then at morning break there's also um, snacks available but there's also free food there as well to sort of help young people to budget um, I always say be careful with the snacks at lunchtime at uh, break time because I know that there are some young people who uh, get very enthusiastic about buying waffles and then spend their lunch money <laughs> at break time um, it does sort of ease itself out. They do get used to it, but it just gives you an idea of what's on offer. And you can see that as well 
as a parent, which is really helpful to see what they've had at uh, breaks and lunch times. Um, so that's something I would encourage you to do if you, you're concerned about that. Um, I was I was just going to say, um, as a school, we do offer a, you know a number of free options oh, yeah. throughout the day. Um, obviously, we have the free breakfast, which varies day to day. I know this week it's been flapjacks and and, and toast. Um, and if they go to the inside can the canteen, because we bring that to them for year seven. If they went into the inside, they could get porridge as well. Um, there's always fruit available at all every every kind of morning break lunch. Uh, we offer we offer fruit. There's also free. Uh, toast and porridge at break time if they want to access that um if they don't want to buy a snack but they they, they are hungry and and there are some deals as well like we can you can get soup and a roll for a pound and just you know there is there is some really kind of um accessible options for students um if they need it so we just want to let parents know that that does you know they do exist um as well um that is really it from us I, I guess i just want to kind of stress again if you've got i'm going to send out a survey actually um in the next couple of days because i've recorded this and i want parents that have not been able to attend to know that it's been recorded um please fill that in because if you've got any questions at the end of that there's a comment box let us know because i will go through all of them and then there'll they'll be a way that i communicate some of those answers back to you and if that needs to be another virtual meeting i'll make it another virtual meeting it might just need to be kind of a, a written communication but just let us know if you've got any questions or if there's anything that you like i really want to know how this works at your at, at charlton high but you've just not answered that question for me please just let us know um because we want to answer as many questions as you've got really um so yeah i will be sending out that survey so please uh, please fill it in um it'll come again via arbor it should go directly to your email address um anything to add sarah no, it's just fantastic to see everybody here tonight and thank you for bearing with us i know it's been a lot of information um that we've given out um and expect to take in as parents and so you know please um you know, please forgive us that, but we will uh, hopefully with all the, with it being on the, the website, you can go back and revisit parts of it as well uh, if we haven't made anything clear. Yes, so please, yeah, get in touch if you need to get in touch as well. We really appreciate your attendance here because, um, you know, we know we've just taken up an hour, and, uh, an hour and 10 minutes of your time. So thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, if you need us, contact us. Thank you yeah. so much. Bye.